The weekend just started and I just realized that I left the book I was reading at work. I've never been more disappointed in myself. Hi guys and welcome, my name is Jude and my soul is crushed because of that book. But today I'm here to do a sort of comparison between two characters from the same author. Those characters being Selenia from the Throne of Glass series and Feyre from A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Now I know the title of this video says Selenia versus Feyre, but it isn't really so much a comparison because I definitely respect both characters as individuals, but I am quite fascinating as to some aspects of the characters and even even more so because they come from the same author so I want to address that today. Just so you know the reason why I'm showing you this book instead of A Thorn of Glass is because I have the old cover and uh yeah. Yeah. Now for starters, of the Throne of Glass series, I have only read the first and second book. And of the Court of Florence and Roses, I have only read the first and second book and I'm currently starting with the third one. So I definitely do not know how the characters develop past those books, but for what I have read, I have thoughts that I would love to share with you guys and that is what this video is for. I have made reviews for both of the first books and each series on my channel and I will link them down below if you want to go and check them out before jumping back to this one. And this video might contain mild spoilers of the first and second book of each series. I will not go into detail to any of them, so they should not be major spoilers, but you might get an inkling as to what is going to happen. So if you wish to enter into the series blindly or continue blindly, then maybe this video is not for you, but you can always come back after you read them. Now the thing I love about Sarah J Maas, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors, it's her character development abilities. I mean world building alone she's amazing. I think that she has one of those awesome qualities that just makes that anything she's describing is painted so clearly to me. Like I can see Perithian, the world from A Court of Thorns and Roses so clearly and I can see, I don't remember the world and hear the name, but I can see the city here just so well. The castle of Adderlian? Irelia, Irelia, something like that. I think it's the kingdom and here, but I'm not sure. But apart from the wonderful settings that she is able to paint, she makes the most amazing characters that I have encountered in my reading journey. Her characters develop fully, all of them. There is not a single character that is introduced that is not interesting or complex in his or her own way. Even those characters that I hate are so interesting and I just constantly find myself wanting to read more of each character and finding out more of their motives and some, yeah, what, what motivates them, what, what gives them the will to continue and all that stuff. So I deeply respect that and admire that in Sarah J Maas. As for both stories, I will just say that I liked them both. I won't get in detail into the aspects of that. You can check out my review for that. But I can tell you that I definitely like more Thorn of Glass than A Court of Thorns and Roses. Similar dynamics happen in both books and I can definitely tell that it comes from the same author. Like you can tell that, it is, that both of them are Sarah J Maas books. But there's some key differences which definitely made Thorn of Glass a much more enjoyable reading experience for me personally. Now going into A Court of Thorns and Roses, I definitely showed some skepticism and I wasn't entirely sure I was going to continue with the series, but as it goes, destiny had it, I continued on with the series. I've given 4 stars to each of the books, but I just think that they're more of a 3.5 star books in my mind, whereas Thorn of Glass is a 5 star book all the way. The reason for this is the main protagonists, both Feyre and Selenia. Now having read both of them very close to one another, I read A Court of Thorns and Roses first, then I read Thorn of Glass. Then I waited like a year and then I read the second book of A Court of Thorns and Roses and the second one of Thorn of Glass, one after the other. And as far as I see it, in my perception of the books, Selenia is much more of an active character, whereas Feyre is much more of a passive character. And that's the key difference between both of them and what makes me like one more than the other. Selenia makes the plot move, which is what I think makes her an active character. She's always taking control of her situation. Of course there are things that happen to her that are beyond her control, but she always, she's always looking to turn the table around and make it about her and taking things into her own hands. It's sort of like if she can't win the game, she will play it along with them, but she will eventually play it better than them. So no matter what happened to her, she always took things into her own hands and took responsibility and control of her actions. Of course, she sometimes felt beaten down or tired because she is human and Sarah J Maas portrays all of these debilities in her characters, but having a moment of weakness did not make her weak because she always bounced back. Now Farah, on the other hand, 
I think she's just a passive character. She seems like an active character, but I don't think she is. The whole story it's about things happening to her and her reacting to them instead of doing things of her own and having the world around her change she just always seemed to be playing the role of a victim and that does not mean that she was not a strong character she had strength of course she had moments of strength and a lot of well, yeah she did a lot of amazing things particularly in the first book towards the ending she definitely th takes things into her own hands but for the most part she is a passive character for Vera it seems that extraordinary things need to happen in order for her to take action and responsibility for herself and that was so 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 painfully evident in the second book I say painfully because I didn't like it in the second book she just seems to be at the mercy of everyone around her and everything and anything that motivates her is always a man which is something that truly truly drove me crazy because anytime she did something for herself she would come to the conclusion that it was done because of a man and she would see it as a something good and I would be reading it and I'd be like no she would blame others for how she was acting and when she finally was able to take control it was motivated by a man in a general context I can tell you that she blames a man for for certain things and then when she finally regains control of herself she thanks another man for making her do that and there's nothing wrong in seeking help and leaning on others but I just think that the way it was done it just made Farah seem like such a weak character uh, like of such a weak character yeah I've seen other reviews where they mention that Farah is actually a lot stronger because she goes through this sort of really strong codependent phase in her life and then she breaks out of it but when she breaks out of it and just takes her motivation from other men I just feel that she didn't really learn anything and that she's just sort of like repeating the same cycle now again I'm not saying that she's necessarily weak but I just find it so fascinating that an author that wrote Selenia whom I thought was such an empowering female character because she is so strong and, and she also embraces her femininity when it's something that it oftentimes feel, feels frowned upon particularly in the bookish world where protagonists will be like I don't do dresses I don't do makeup because that's sort of like a dumb thing to waste my time on. Well, Selenia fully embraces that because she likes that idea of being feminine and she can be feminine and be strong at the same time. So I just think of her as sort of like a hero and an amazingly well done character. And then on the other hand, there's Feyre, whom I, I just struggle so much to like and comprehend. And I don't have to like her. Of course I don't. You don't need to like a character for them to be good. But I just don't think that Feyre is such a good character because of the of what I said. I feel that she isn't learning anything and at the end of the day, she is just repeating the same mistakes or she will make them. Obviously, if I read the sequel, it will probably be a happy ending. But I just feel that at the end of the day, at the core of Feyre's being, she, she hasn't really made much progress. And I think that's fascinating that it comes from the same author. That the same author that created Selenia created Feyre. It shows a lot of the author that she is able to explore both of these sides and make them both interesting characters. And I would love to know your thoughts on this. Like, I honestly think that if Selenia and Feyre met right now at the point that I am in this story, like in the second book of both of them, they Selenia would just hate Feyre and would try to beat her ass, like, and be like, wake up, girl, wake up. As I said, Feyre does have these sort of like awakening moments and it seems like she is taking control control of her situation in the third book but as far as the second book is concerned I definitely think that Selena would kick her ass and be like oh my god no but those are just my thoughts and I would love to know your thoughts so if you've read both of these books and have thoughts on their main protagonist I would love it if you would share them in the comment section down below I just want to know if I'm alone in this. Am I the only one that thinks to sway? I don't know. I have conflicts between both characters, but I just find it fascinating that they do come from the same author. I, I, I would love like to sort of like chat with Sarah J. Mass and be like, yo, what happened? Why did you write her this way? Where does it come from? What's your motivation? Um, of course, they are both flawed characters and their flaws have to come from somewhere, but like, why exactly that way Farah and why exactly that way Selenia and what part of her do they come from? Oh my god, so many questions. So, um, yes, thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!